So you've been working hard on your iMovie project and you're not done and you want to work on it later. There's a few concepts I want to outline before we actually get into saving your files. One is that when you're in the University of Victoria libraries working on the iMac computers, if you return to the iMac computer where you were originally working within the next seven days, your files will still be stored on the hard drive. I will show you how to get them. They won't be automatically loaded when you launch iMovie, but they're still on the hard drive. After seven days, they get deleted. So if you think you're going to come back to the exact same machine within the next seven days, they will be there for you to be able to work on. And so you technically do not need to um, take them with you, but it's always advisable as a backup. So let's have a look at the iMovie window as well and reinforce some concepts. The bottom right are all the events that I've imported into the iMovie library and these are the visual clips themselves and here's all the files on the bottom left. On the top left is my project and it looks like I've copied and pasted all my clips up into the project but really I haven't. What I've done is I've, I've created a visual set of instructions for iMovie to know what to do with my clips to create a project. This is called non-destructive editing. If I was truly copying and pasting clips from the library into my project, I'd be altering them forever and I would never be able to get my original footage back. But that's not what's happening here. You're just creating a set of instructions to tell iMovie what to do with your footage. So it's important that the events and the projects move together. Your project is useless without your events. If I had no events, but I still had this project, you would see a bunch of yellow triangles with exclamation marks in them telling me that iMovie can't find the clip and it doesn't know what it's looking at. And so I won't be able to finish my project and I won't be able to export it. That's something we want to avoid. Let's see how we can avoid that by looking where these files actually live on the computer. So if we open up a finder window, you'll see under your icon, under movies, is your iMovie events and your iMovie projects. And that's that that's where all these files live. Now I said that the projects don't mean anything without the events. Look at how tiny this little file is. Compared to my events library, my Zoe files, these are huge and we've got all these uh, other files I didn't create. iMovie automatically generated this entire, entire file structure, the events folder, as well as all these other folders inside every time I import footage into my iMovie library. So it's great that it's happening behind the scenes and I don't have to think about it. And it's also great that iMovie auto saves. And it's great that iMovie does non-destructive editing. But when you're going to take your files with you, you just have to be really careful that you're taking the right thing. So what you want to do is under your name, under movies, under events and projects, these are the files we want. And I'm just going to drag them onto my hard drive or your USB stick um, to save them for later. So as you can see, this is going to take some time. These are big files. Uh, NTSC files are shot at 30 frames per second. So think of it as 30 pictures per second of the footage that you have. This is, this is a lot. This is thousands and thousands of pictures. And that's why it takes a while and that's why they're so big. So this is going to take some time. Now when I'm done and it's all finished, I'm going to unplug my hard drive. I'm going to walk away. I'm going to come back. Again, if you're going to come back to the same iMac computer, you know, you don't have to do this. Um, but if you're going to be at a different computer, it's going to be more than seven days, you're going to want to do this, or if you're just being cautious. So when you sit back down to an iMac and you want to continue working on your project, you're just going to go in reverse. You're going to take the files off your USB stick or your hard drive, and you're going to stick them into the movies folder. Now I want to be really clear. You're going to drop them on top of this blue bar here, or you're going to drop them into this white space below, which means you're dropping it into the movies file. Something that's a mistake that's really easy to make is to accidentally drop the events folder on top of the events folder and the projects folder on top of the projects folder. If you do that, you're actually putting them inside these folders. So in this case, if you were to do that accidentally, you would drop your iMovie events folder that you want iMovie to look at on top of this other one that you don't want it to look at. And so all that would be in this space here would be another iMovie events folder. And iMovie won't see that. And so when you open iMovie, it's going to confuse you because you're going to be terrified that your footage is gone. Really, it's just in the wrong place. So being very clear that you're going to drag and drop your files into, into the movies folder 
to replace the iMovie events and the projects that are on the hard drive with the ones that you want that are on your own personal USB stick or hard drive that you've taken away from the last time you did your work. So basically we're tricking iMovie into looking at the projects and the events that you want to do today so that when that's all finished, you've gone in reverse, everything's successful, you open iMovie and it looks exactly like it did when you were last working on your project. That's exactly what we want to see here. So um, it is fairly straightforward, um, just really important to follow the right steps. Now let's say that you um, didn't save your files, it's been seven within seven days, you're at the same iMac and you want to grab your files. You'll, uh, you'll sit down, you'll, you'll launch iMovie and it won't be the way you expect it to be. You actually have to grab your files and stick them right where we've been talking about, but you got to find them. So under the hard drive itself, you'll see users and there'll be a saved folder. In there, when you click on that, there'll be a list of Netlink IDs. You'll find your own and in there, you'll go to the movies folder, grab the uh, of iMovie events and iMovie projects, copy them and you're going to paste them back under your home icon into movies and into this folder. So same concept, just a different place to find the files. So hopefully this has helped you understand how to save your iMovie files from the uh, University of Victoria Library iMac computer so that you can work on them in the future and keep building your movies and making them better.